Alrighty guys and welcome back. We're gonna be having a look at the shrine yet again today So you can see the shrine has just reset seven days until it goes I can currently see we have wake up We have third seal we have deliverance and we also have bamboozled now Let's talk a little bit about these perks. This first one is called wake up It is actually a pretty phenomenal perk as of the changes in Dead by Daylight. Now, you might be run wondering what changes I'm referring to. Recently, the hatch is now available at 4 and 5 gens, and the killer can close the hatch by kicking it. If the killer closes a hatch, it means exit gates are now powerable. Exit gates take approximately 20 seconds to open with no skill checks. Wake up allows you to open 5, 10, and 15% quicker on the exit gate, and reveals your aura towards teammates. It has 128 meter aura, which covers almost all in the majority of all maps. Um, this is really good. Uh, if you jump on an exit gate, you're obviously looking at light math. However, if your teammate has leader and you're on an exit gate without wake up, you're gonna have more of a benefit. So leader affects other people around you as opposed to wake up would help you affect yourself in terms of opening the gate. This could be good for one of two strats. If you are a slug and you have adrenaline and you crawl to an exit gate and the killer doesn't know where you are and he goes for the hatch, you can just wait at front of the exit gate. He kicks the hatch, you open the door. Now you open the door in like 17 and a half seconds. So you could probably get out. I've done it quite a few times on maps like the game, but then again you have a 50-50 depending on which door he checks. Whichever door is closest to the hatch is generally the one they go for. So wake up's not bad. It is a Quentin teachable. Would I run it personally? No, I think it's not too bad in solo queue. It is uh, a rich man's version of left behind. Left behind is a dud perk which should never be used um, due to there's no point, no reason. Um, I don't mind wake up though. Honestly, it's okay. There are just better options on the table. You shouldn't be relying on being the last one alive to open the exit gate. You don't have to be the last one alive, but this means you have to be at the exit gate. Normally when exit gates are powered, I'm either looping the killer, I might be on the hook and then get saved into adrenaline, etc. So I don't think it's a viable perk because it's too, you know, risky for you to rely on being the one opening the door. People could chase you for the door and if you're waving at the door for a door daily, they'll 99 the door, then give you the door. Most cases, otherwise they'll just open the door, etc. So I think it's a bit of a dud to go the entire game without an enhancement and then have it I know what you're thinking you just said adrenaline yeah adrenaline's a bit different because it'll heal me a state at the end of the game guaranteed wake up has a you must get to the door before it activates like hope hope's guaranteed etc Moving on to the next perk, this is called Hex Third Seal. Now, this is actually a phenomenal perk. A lot of people undermined how great this perk is. This gives blindness. Now, there are two things that give blindness in terms of perks in this game. You can also have add-ons that give blindness. For example, a hatchet from a huntress can give blindness. A clown bottle can give blindness. A pig bear trap can give blindness, as well as a legion hit. Now, looking here, we've got Third Seal. This means, basically, when you hit a survivor, it... Two survivors can be affected at tier 1, three at tier 2, and four at tier 3. That's a bit hard to say. Um, so it's not bad. Once you hit everybody once, now they're going to be under the effect of blindness. What does blindness do? That is a good question. If you are blind and I down your teammate, you do not get to see your teammate go down. If I hook your teammate, you will initially see the aura of where he is hooked, and then his aura will disappear, so you need to remember. That can really throw people off while they're working on a Jenny going, I've got enough time to run down there. They'll work on a Jenny a little bit too long, then run in and he'll hit struggle, vice versa. Could forget where he's located too. This allows you to snowball. The other perk that uh, works really well with third seal as a backup would be knockout. Knockout does the exact same thing to the person on the ground. However, the good thing about knockout is a survivor can't tell when you're picking up the survivor. Well, the killer can't. You cannot tell when you're picking up a teammate. So basically, if I down Jeff and you know, we've got Megan watching. Megan can see me pick him up and then go for a save because a pickup animation is about 2.5 seconds. I move at 108% with a body on my shoulder and then I need to get to a hook to hook. He can get the save and they can both run away with BT. However, if she doesn't know where the guy on the ground is, she cannot make that educated decision unless she has a visual indicator of watching me as well. It can mean people can be really nervous, irritated, you know, have to try and find the killer. What if you're a small heartbeat killer like Michael Myers? They could be really, you know, shocked. You could be ghost face. Um, this works also on Huntress's throwing axes. Uh, I used to see it a lot on a nurse with Deerstalker and Knockout with Sloppy Butcher. It was pretty gross. It went through a horrible phase here, but uh, it's gone now. Not many people do run this perk as it is outweighed by things like Ruin, which gives you regression providing it's not found. This gives you no regression unless you're going for the snowball. Keep in mind, if somebody's trying to self-care, it takes 32 seconds. If you have Sloppy Butcher, it'll take 40 seconds for them to heal themselves. So that can be a stall in its own, but when you're versing really good survivors, they'll most likely have Dead Hard, Deliver, um, 
Iron Will and DS. There you go. Adrenaline. Something borrowed time. Some really scary perks. So they're not going to bother healing uh, the entire game unless they're going for a save in the basement and they're on Death Hook or the guy in the basement is on Death Hook, etc. Moving on to the next perk, guys. So all in all, I wouldn't say Third Seal's bad, but it's outweighed. It's better than Lullaby, but it's worse than things like Ruin. Remember, if you're running a uh, totem perk, it is a gamble. You're relying on luck. Even if it's Horn of Ground, you're relying on luck for them to break it. You're relying on luck for a good totem placement for this. That's why I prefer Corrupt Intervention. That way, I'm not relying on luck. I can rely on that Jenny, that Jenny, and that Jenny being sealed for 120 seconds, allowing me to get prep out, pressure out, pallets down, split pressure, hooks, trades, etc. in 120 seconds. Get out of tier 1 as Myers, etc. Deliverance. Now, wow, let's talk about Deliverance. Deliverance is a phenomenal perk. Now, this is the number one counter to Devour Hope. Devour Hope, if you are outside of 24 meters while a guy is getting saved, you will get a token of Devour Hope. At two tokens, you move 5% quicker after hooking somebody for a couple of seconds. At three tokens, your M1 will become an instant injure. Therefore, a trapper will be able to down you as if, as if it was a hillbilly's chainsaw. Um, so... Devour Hope is a powerful perk. I personally, on my spirit, I run a really gross build. I run Devour Hope, Haunted Ground, uh, Pop Goes the Weasel, and Thrilling Tremor. But Thrilling Tremor is integratable with Make Your Choice or Barbecue, depending on how well these players, I think, are going to hide, etc, etc. So it could be very scary, but we're not here to talk about Devour Hope. Devour Hope works when an ally saves you. If the killer is outside of 24 meters and I Kobe with Deliverance, it will not give him a stack. So therefore, it counters... Um, uh, Devour Hope, which is awesome. However, this means to get this, I need to hook save another player and have them not go down. So this works really well with Borrowed Time. So in my build scenario, I like Deliverance and DS. Deliverance guarantees a hook. DS guarantees a wiggle off the killer's shoulder. It also works well with Unbreakable. So if you don't know what DS does, when the killer picks you up, you stab him on a skill check and you get to run away for five seconds while he's stunned. So if the killer's face camping me and I Deliverance in front of him, I'll try and dead hard. If I land my dead hard, great. If not, then I start running. He M1s me. He picks me up. I DS him and then I run. Otherwise, I have Unbreakable. I could try another play, right? Say he's smart. Say... Well, he's a face camper. How smart could he be? Say he's smart though, right? The guy's on the hook. He Kobe's off. He downs him. He starts recovering. He recovers to 99% and then jumps in a locker while the killer goes to attack. Killer grabs him out of the locker animation. That's animation lock. Then he can DS the killer during that animation and get away. If you know you're going to get hit and you have DS, probably best bet is to go into the locker in case the killer tries to slug you and just rotate. If he grabs you out of the locker, you DS your shoulder. Otherwise, he waits a minute while looking at the locker. Do you know what I mean? It's easy math to get more productivity. 60 seconds is a long time in DVD. Jenny's take 80 seconds to do with no enhancements, landing every great against Ruin. So all in all, this is an Adam perk. I really do recommend it for a good player. If you're kind of new to DBD, maybe Kindred's more of a better thing for you to allow your teammates to know where they are and where the killer is. Although Deliverance is going to be very good for you if you're an intermediate advanced player with Borrowed Time, Deliverance, DS, and Dead Hard. There you go. You're going to be able to get in, get the save. Yes, you're hooked at the end of the game, so Adrenaline's not going to heal you, even though you can't heal with Deliverance. Remember, when you unhook yourself as with Deliverance, it's 100% guaranteed, but you have unbroken status for 100 80 and then 60 seconds meaning you cannot be healed or mended so if you do it at the end of the game you're probably gonna have to get out as end game only lasts three minutes when the exit gates are powered and if you're hooked it's probably about you know maybe halfway so it's not too bad it's a good perk in the right hands would i run it in solo queue no i'd run borrowed time dead hard iron will and adrenaline in solo queue most likely and then if we started getting bullied quite a few games where nobody was getting out i'd most likely integrate uh adrenaline with alert just so I have better situational awareness, which doesn't happen often that I need to do that swap over. Bamboozled. Now, wow. This is a phenomenal clown perk. You guys might be wondering what makes Bamboozled so damn good. Well, I'll tell you what makes Bamboozled so damn good. You know those pesky windows that you're struggling to catch at? Maybe you struggle at mind gaming the shack. Maybe you struggle at mind gaming the cold tower, which is very difficult as well. Well, rest of sure, when you vault a window, you vault 5, 10, and 15% quicker, whether it's tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3. And the window seals for, I think it's... 8, 10, and... Tw no, it's 16 seconds, tier 3. Let me just quickly check on something, guys. I want to make sure if I'm telling you the numbers. I have the numbers 100% 100, 100 set in stone. I'm pretty sure Bamboozled... Yep. 
bamboozled is it's 16 seconds at tier 3 so there you go guys so you're going to be looking at vaulting a window 15% quicker alongside having the entity block the window for 16 seconds this means survivors can't get through it it's going to allow you to make incredible plays like hide your light mind game etc so if I'm at a double window loop I could maybe hide my light twist my camera come around vault the window or make it look like I'm sidestepping into a vault and vacuum back into it survivor misposition himself I walk through from a hillbilly I'll go for a chainsaw depending on if he went back left to the other window or if he went right if he went right I chainsaw if he goes left I go for the M1 etc much like respecting pallets or just going through them as a billy um, this being said bamboozled is not a amazing perk it's great but it's not amazing now let's look at people that bamboozled affect the biggest uh survivor that is affected by bamboozled is michael myers michael myers in tier one moves at 105 in tier two moves at 115 with a 16 meter heartbeat in tier one he has a six meter heartbeat and in tier three i believe he has a 24 meter heartbeat moves at 115 percent movement speed has longer lunge and ha also has 10 percent vault benefit now because he already has built in 10 percent vault benefit why not stack that with bamboozled it does stack it also stacks with fired up but that's a waste slot that relies on them doing work and you're not getting any bang for your buck until they complete objectives which isn't really a great kind of mentality to go for much like relying on noed or blood warden so on michael myers you pop tier three you go through a window almost instantly it would also stack with the ray thumb vaulting window animation as well um you can go straight through a window it works on legions window vault too but uh these are killers that i wouldn't run it on i definitely run it on michael myers i'm currently running it on michael myers at my rank one build it allows me to go through guarantee an m1 or at least a tier three upgrade hit on somebody or some stalk i will get something out of it but then again remember it is a map dependent perk bamboozle you could get a map like the game where there's six windows and then not be able to do anything about it you could get a map like larry's institute where there's a lot of really annoying windows that loop up together so it just comes down to rng now if you're running bamboozled and ruin you're relying on rng and rng how many rng perks do you want to rely on you, re you rely on noed you rely on them not breaking the totems you're relying on rng again i like more consistency therefore pop goes the weasel reward me for playing well barbecue rewards you for playing well devour rewards you for playing well but it's a bit of a, a gamble as well you've also got things like uh, thrilling tremor discordance surveillance there's a lot of perks make your choice that will reward you for playing well now i'm not saying all those perks are fitting for, towards the hillbilly but or michael myers but they're just perks to consider yeah don't rely on ruin all the time now i know what you're thinking you currently have ruin on your build too yeah that's because i just went to hattonfield against uh, a group of survivors that i was really <laughs> Not too keen to go to Hattonfield against, but we managed to pull through and uh, win it with one Jenny left. Now, I would normally run Corrupt Intervention on my Billy unless I saw more than two toolboxes, then I'd swap over to Ruin. Um, it's just one of those stages where you've caught me with what I currently have now. This is my Billy build, in case anyone's wondering. I'll make a separate video for that as well. You got Pop Goes Weasel for Regression. You don't need Barbecue. You got Thrilling Tremor for the map momentum that you have at 230% movement speed, so you can get towards your Pop Goes Weasel quick. Enduring, so you can bully down pallets and then Ruin as a staple to slow down the game. Or you've got um, Corrupt Intervention as well. You could run Discordance, but I wouldn't. I would personally want to seal the Jennies far away or know if people were working on them so i would rather take ruin so they're less likely to be able to do the jenny or corrupt intervention so they can't do it running discordance and having two people on two separate jennies with no um stall until you actually get hooked with no add-ons would be very difficult Alrighty guys, that's going to be all for um, this week's shrine. Hopefully there's something cute you can see on there that you want. I personally would definitely recommend Bamboozled if you're a killer main and you don't have the clown DLC. Otherwise, I'd recommend Deliverance if you want to get better at Survivor and you don't own Adam as a DLC. So thank you guys, and I will uh, see you in the next shrine video.